Liquid e Secret impressionou no outro jogo da Liquid, pra falar sincero, pra ser sincero. Mas a nave eu acho que ganha, ela tá mais forte, ela tá mais estruturada do que a Team Circuit. Nave, nave vai ganhar, o time já tá formado desde o meta passado, eles têm mais chance. Ah, eu acho que a nave vai bem, porque tipo, eles estão com uma lineup bem forte, era antiga FPX com o Sinead, é muito, muito forte. Mas apesar que a Team Secret surpreendeu, eu pensava que eles não iam passar da Liquid. No outro jogo, para Leviathan, acho que eles são um dos times que vem bem forte, representando bastante nosso cenário da América. E acho que eles conseguem ir longe sim no campeonato, não seria nenhuma surpresa eles até ganhar, eu acho. Eight teams survived the first round of this Omega Bracket, but today two more will be sent home. Hello everyone and welcome to day 10 of Lock-In. We're coming to you live from Sao Paulo, Brazil. I am your host, Ying Su, and today joining me on the desk all day for both matches, it is Bren and Sai Show. Welcome guys, we have a good day. It's Saturday, uh, the fans are filling in and I'm very excited for the games. Yeah, it seems vibey in here. I, I'm noticing <laughs> the, the fans outside are all chilling. It's Saturday. Yeah. They're out there getting food, ready to watch the games. And I think we've got a heater on our hands. Yeah, the potential's there, isn't it, as well? I mean, we've got two matches where, theoretically, we could have some upsets happening, but a lot of still uncertainty, despite the fact that we've seen every team play so far now at the event. Yeah, yeah. that's wild. Lots of Leviathan jerseys as well out there. Uh, I think they're selling them, too. I might go grab myself one after this. Uh, but before we talk about today, let's talk about yesterday's match. First, we saw Fnatic uh, kind of dismantling this Sentinels roster. I think people thought this game, uh, Josh, was going to be a lot closer than it was. Yeah, I agree. I was really impressed with Fnatic. I think that they deserve the Super Team level from what they've demonstrated so far. But this Sentinels team, wow, still looking rough despite the talent on the squad. I mean, they, they put up some level of resistance, but they got outclassed. And I think, yeah, it's obviously going to be quite a while, but not that many good signs for that. It kind of rolled them. No, absolutely. But obviously, early days of the 2023 season. So this big lock-in tournament, there's a lot of uh, variables at play, but I completely agree with you. I think Fnatic looking so good. But for this T1 match as well, where they played against Furia, I mean, T1 showed some signs of life early on. But again, just a bit of disappointment, I would say, from that team. From Carpe, where we're my them. goat. My Carpe, my goat. I mean, Carpe, my goat for the first five rounds of yeah, Pearl. Yeah. I was like, oh, they're trading effectively. They've shored up their weaknesses, but they just could not a hold on actually, against the pressure of Actually, Dejazine, my goat. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Dejazine. I was sat in the VIP area watching that game as well, and I can't hear out my right ear as well because some guy was vamosing behind me so loud. <laughs> he was just screaming over every kill that Dejazine got. It was, it was, it was Josh, wild. Yeah. Yeah, it was, it was actually it was you. Me. Yeah, uh, Dirk and Dejazine, the next round. That's going to be really exciting, is isn't it? Uh, speaking of the next round, let's take a look at the current uh, Omega bracket because I feel like a lot of people's pickems might be in tatters just because how the bracket have gone so far. We've got Team Secret beating out Liquid to get this far. Na'Vi, they're still in it. I know a lot of Brazilian fans are gonna want yeah, okay, uh, on, Furia to... Real quick here. I've had two Bracketology segments that have been ruined by production. We've thrown up the graphic as well this time. I want it done properly. I want my time to shine. No one's going to deny me. I paid off Kurt to bring the bracket in as well. Okay. So we're going to be doing this live. And I want to do my Bracketology this time. No pressure. I'm going to be able to do this, okay? Some real alpha energy has been exuded. Yeah, I mean... I, I, uh, I was about to say something I probably shouldn't have been on the broadcast, <laughs> but listen. Oh, hold on, wait, 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 I'm on your side. Golden Boy, you know, before he handed off the pre-show to me, was like, whatever you do, give Brent as much time as he can to be as unhinged as he can. So, Golden Boy, I'm doing this for you. Get rid of the clock production. Come on, come on, come on. Okay, come so on, what, get what rid is of the it. first match that we're starting with here? Uh, I believe we're starting uh, with Na'Vi, right? We've got to be the Na'Vi okay. secret game. I mean, yeah. I feel like secret Na'Vi's got to be a fairly quick one, right? I don't mean to be secret dismissive Navi. of secret, but Na'Vi, Copenhagen champions, they're okay. looking really strong. Yeah, no, I think I would agree with you with that one. Na'Vi, looking like the strong favorites here. Listen, secret, great team, did a good job of, of uh, you know, upsetting expectations, and they are looking pretty strong, but Na'Vi just ultimately have the stronger core. And I think a big part of that, listen, Angel, this guy's coming in as the IGL. He's rolling back the gears once more. He has like one match per tournament, it feels like, where he does this, where he just drops 30 kills, he finds the fountain of youth, and then he loses it again. So, <laughs> yeah, but he has to not lose it again in this game <laughs> in order to keep that up, I suppose. But yeah, I think that's a fairly simple one. This I, is like I, I mean, su surprisingly logical. Yeah, I mean, yeah, but, I mean of course. But also, I think the next one's very simple as well. Leviathan are massive favorites. They looked yeah. incredible in the first game. I think you just breeze past that one as well. Surely. Surely, right? 
Massive favorites. Okay, yeah, that's not happening. I'm going with Vitality for this one. Where's the Vitality one? Where is it? Oh, that's the bro, no, 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 no. Leviathan looks so good. Where are they? Leviathan no. looks so good. Listen. They look so good on the scent. Let, let me convince you just for two seconds, please. Their, their ascent looked god tier. I'm not giving they've you been, two minutes. They've been winning faster, every scrim. Faster. They've been winning every faster. scrim, please. Mazzino has been popping off. They've been going unbelievable dumb hard. Dude, I am like the biggest I wasn't EM listening. I'm the biggest EMEA fan ever, and even I would not put Vitality over Leviathan. Oh, you've I wasn't ruined listening. My this bracket. is crazy. I wasn't listening. You've ruined my bracket. It's, no, this is my bracket. It's bracketology with Brent, okay? The bracketologist. Okay, okay. But surely you're not gonna put Footballist through against 100 Thieves. I'm I'm kinda down for Footballist. <laughs> <laughs> Are you a Footballist, 100 Thieves? Uh, no, this is gonna oh, be 100 Thieves. Listen, come I mean, on. I'm going with 100 Thieves for that one. That That is, you know, listen, I, I can't be entirely illogical. I think 100 Thieves will be winning that one, so. Okay. That one on. And what about the final one? Uh, Fnatic versus Furia? Yeah. Fnatic heavy favorites. It's okay. a super team. They've already proven it, right? Okay. I think. Listen, I, I, even though Fnatic are going to be playing against the crowd, this team together finally, you know, the princes that were promised, this is the team coming together. They've got all this talent on their side. I mean, I, I think that it's just. I'm just waiting for the butt. Heavy don't favorites. Jinx no, 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 don't no, jinx it. Listen, guys, don't no, 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 this is entirely serious. I don't like him I, predicting this. It's a very fanatic. logical bracket. Look at this. I mean, we've got relatively favorite. The, I mean, the only exception. Dude, how much do you love EMEA? Yeah, EMEA. Do you want to come over to I love EMEA? EMEA? Yeah, they're great, sure. <laughs> all right, so, so that sets up an absolute banger matchup of Fnatic 100 Thieves in your bracket. Yeah. So. Who's winning that game? I what mean, you talked about how good Fnatic are. Fnatic are a super team. Fnatic looking strong. Yinsu's on the desk. Yeah. What are you going for? So we're in the top four. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, behave. This is behave. prime. Listen, I'm sorry. Behave. This is, this hey, yo, where's Mimi at? Is Mimi is working prime. today? Can we I'm get sorry. Mimi back? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. This is prime time for Fraudnatic. Dude. This is prime time for Fraudnatic to come out. What I mean, is listen, going every on? major event they haven't been able to make it happen. Uh, if it gets to this point, yeah. I think it's 100 Thieves taking it. Bit Listen, bit I think a, it's 100 Thieves taking bit, it. Bit of a fraudnatic joke moment. Yeah. I could see it. Could so see original, it. you guys. So original. <laughs> Never heard that one before. First time, first time, first time. Carry on. <laughs> well, the next match, the only match we've got left, yeah. the Na'Vi yeah. Vitality. Yeah. So heavy favorites, Na'Vi. Yeah. Super team. Mm -hmm. Angels found a fountain of youth against Vitality. Dark Horse team coming I mean, through. I mean, I just want to say I would have Levy Yatan going through here, but that, that isn't yeah, even possible. Yeah, me too, me Yeah, too. I mean, uh, I think Vitality are going Oh, my through. God. What is going <laughs> Are you this French, Brent? Bracket. Are you French? This is my bracket. I got. I mean, this. It looks kind of cool. Imagine if that happened. Why? Why do you have fatality? Why? Well, because so they high? listen. They don't care about pistol rounds. They can ignore them because they're so good on the eco rounds and they got sheriffs in their hands. <laughs> so I think that's going to be the difference maker. Listen, the amount of rounds that they managed to pull around against global uh, global esports by just uh, by just winning the uh, the eco rounds when they really shouldn't have. It's an outrageously unhinged bracket, I think. It's got yeah. so, it's got some things I agree with, I, so only, many things I don't. I'm only going to support this if you think Vitality then beats 100 Thieves and then beats whoever wins loud at um, DRX and take the whole tournament. If you if you can say that with chess sure. right now, I will support this. <laughs> sure, <laughs> yeah. All right. Okay. Yeah, that, he said it. Not yeah. us, not us. But then if it does happen, we, we had, you know, we had a little bit. We covered ourselves. Yeah, yeah, thanks, we covered thanks for giving me the time, though. Make my you, I regret it. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> um, there you have it, you guys. Uh, take a good look at this. Take a screenshot if you want. And when Bren is really, really wrong, I want you to tweet at him, DM him, whatever need uh, you, you feel that you want to do, and make sure uh, you let him know how wrong he is. But uh, we do have a poll for you guys uh, for today. Make sure you scan the QR code and tell us who do you think have the biggest chance? Who do you believe in the most today out of these 14? Leviathan. <laughs> yeah, a secret. Navi, Leviathan, or uh, Team Vitality. Bren's about to make like a hundred fake Twitter accounts just to <laughs> Vitality. Just pump yeah. the vote. Yeah, yeah, All yeah, the votes yeah. with Vitality. He's yeah. literally <laughs> going to rig the votes right now. Uh, but yeah, make sure you use the code. And of course, uh, tweet at us as well with the hashtags VCT Lockin and VCT throughout the show. Once again, make sure you let him know that he is wrong. Uh, we're going to give you guys an opportunity to do that now as we take a break. And just make sure that Brent's doing okay. You know, just Yeah, I know. We need fine. a mental I'm fine. Show. I'm happy. I've, I've come into this show yeah. with energy. I got on the show today. Everybody was dead. <laughs> like, I was good. Okay, we'll see you on the other side of this break. <laughs>
Welcome back, everyone. It's time for us to cut the nonsense and actually talk about the first matchup of the day, starting uh, with Team Secret versus Na'Vi. Let's go with Secret first, because I feel like they're, again, carrying on the narrative, uh, Bren, of Pacifics. We cannot underestimate the teams coming from Pacifics. Yeah, absolutely. These guys have come out and they've showcased as well, I think, higher peaks than, than I was personally expecting as well. I'll, I'll, I'll be the first one to admit. Yeah, I was yeah. underestimating, I think, the, the real peaks of this Team Secret squad, um, especially with the opponents that are up against. But they turned up and they turned up with, with really great individual skill, I think, across the board. Envy in particular really impressed me, actually. I thought that this guy was taking fantastic timings when he was playing largely that initiator role. But they just had good ideas, solid game plans, and it was enough to really just crack a rather shaky Liquid. Yeah, and I think that's that's the important part, right? When you look at how they actually beat Team Liquid, they were applying quite a bit of pressure to them, and then Liquid completely crumbled under that pressure. But I think you've got to give credit to Team Secret for the things that they were doing well. Like, I think that they had some really good ideas, always comboing, like, Shock Molly stuff together, Jesse Vash using his Hunter's Furies early on, too, and then you have a lot of power coming out from the, the fragging side. But I think when you look at the tape and you see the stuff that... Secret are doing, a lot of it is still quite standard, and then Liquid just crumbled under the pressure. I think it was an embarrassingly bad performance from Liquid, honestly. But I'm not gonna judge Doombros by the sins of his brother. I think that I think that Navi are gonna be able to take that pressure and actually push Team Secret to the point where we get to see what their ceiling is. And I think that's what we haven't seen. We saw Team, Team Secret come out and get a win. A massive upset went a great result for them, but we actually didn't see how far they can go. And I think this game is gonna be a true test of that. Yeah, no, I, I completely agree with that. How far can this Team Secret go? What is their peak going to be? If there's any team out there that's gonna be pushing them to the limits, it's gonna be the, the, the opponents that are up against here today. Well, let's hear a little bit more from Team Secret's Dubstep, who sat down with Golden Boy and Achilles for a quick chat about the squad's growth in the offseason. Hey, what's going on, everyone? GB here once again with Achilles, and uh, this time we uh, got to get ready for some wub wubs because we're joined by Dubstep, uh, who's with us from Team Secret. How you doing, buddy? Uh, I'm feeling excited. Like I've been, it's been so long since I've been in a LAN event like this. Yeah. So yeah, nothing but positivity, I guess. Well, that's good to know, and it actually leads me right into my first question, which is, you know, because we haven't seen you guys in a while, like what were some of the struggles last season? And, and how do you feel that has been addressed for VCT 2023? I guess last season it was really rough because I wouldn't say like we got ahead of ourselves. I guess we got left out in the competition because mm -hmm. I feel like we didn't grow as individuals. Like in that case, we needed to find like a solution for it. So this was kind of the solution, like changing some of the players, I guess. So I feel like this year, it would be really different because I think, I think like the the solutions that we 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 fix, I think it's really working so far. I think I guess. Well, and, I, and I'm sure a lot of that comes from you know working with your new coach Warbird, who's coming in, uh, and. Uh, one, like, has he been going to the Philippines to, like, work with you guys? Or has it been, like, how, how's been the workflow with, with, with the coach? So, basically, he's a remote coach. So, he works in the U.S. Okay. Yeah, while we practice at the at APAC. Mm -hmm. So, it's really rough for him because the time zones, obviously. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's, like, in a reverse, like, reverse, reverse <laughs> schedule. He's <laughs> awake in the night, sleep at the day, something mm. like that. And I appreciate like his sacrifice doing that. So, so far there was no issue regarding the schedules. And 
it's been going smoothly, I guess. I mean, this is like your first time actually meeting him in person then, now that you're yeah. all here at the event. I mean, what, what was that like to finally be like, oh, this is the voice that I've been hearing. You know, I've seen your photo, but I've never gotten to meet you before. How was that? Actually, the first time he met me, I was in the hotel lobby. Mm -hmm. Then one guy like put his arm over me and I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> Who the hell is this? <laughs> oh, he's my coach. So, I, <laughs> so I'm like, oh, okay, nice to meet you, bro. I did, I did not expect you to be this tall. <laughs> no, because <laughs> originally we thought we were on the same height, but yeah. I, I, I think I was cheating. He was taller than me. <laughs> so <laughs> so yeah, great. it feels great meeting your coach. Uh, actually, it's one of the things that made us really like in a good mood right now. Yeah. So mm. meeting each other. It's it's always like it's always like a good thing to meet your coach in person, right? Like everyone in person you're working with. Yeah. So right. the mood is really nice right now. I hope it continues throughout the tournament. That's good. That's awesome. But I, yeah, I mean, in addition to, to meeting him for the first time, obviously there's still a three-man core from the previous team. Secret, yeah. yourself, uh, Borkham, and Jesse Bash that are still there. But you've also added three newer faces, some faces that don't have a ton of experience, especially in playing in an international uh, scenario. Aside from winning at this event, what are your other goals or things that you're hoping to take away from this uh, this tournament? I think what we want to take away from VCT Lock-In is, obviously this is a tournament that shows every franchise teams, right? Yeah. So yeah. it's a tournament to, to, to see what to expect coming to, to Pacific League, VCT Masters, VCT Champions. Yeah, so yeah. it's like, obviously it's called the kickoff tournament. So yeah, it's, it's how we, I guess how we prepare ourselves up on the upcoming events, especially the VCT Pacific, I think is one of the most important events that we should be preparing. L last thing, are there any teams since you guys are going to be coming in playing against, you know, uh, a, a whole slew of international teams? Any squads in particular that you know Secret's excited to play against potentially? Maybe not from Pacific, but from EMEA and Americas. I guess we our wish came true. We are going against, I guess, two of the best teams in EMEA. Obviously, Liquid, if you yeah. win against Liquid, it's either Crew or Navi. Also, both decent teams. So, yeah, I think we we got too much on our plate right now. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, at least you know you're going to be nice and full, right? <laughs> <laughs> True. <laughs> All right, well, Dub Z, I want to thank you so much for joining us, and we wish you the best of luck in the tournament. Thank you, thank you, guys. All right, everyone, back to you. Of course, as they discussed, you know, this isn't the same team secret we saw last year. And the newer players, Josh, the ones we had questions about, I feel like they, they showed up and they answered those against Team Liquid. Yeah, they looked awesome. It's a real firepower injection having Jeremy and Envy on the team. And I think that has made a lot of the difference for Team Secret. And I think those two players are good enough to be able to take it to Na'Vi's players. Well, uh, well, can they? Are they good enough? I, I know you think they're good enough, but Na'Vi, I feel like, are a different fish compared to Team Liquid. Of course, they are a proven team already. Uh, and when we saw them again uh, with CNED Bren, they won a 2-0. What we expected? Yeah, what we expected, but there were some signs of weakness as well, which I, I think we'll get onto a little bit later. But overall, what we expected from this roster was the existing core of FPX comes over, ported over, with CNED being that one-to-one -one replacement with a player like Ardis. And overall, they were looking really, really strong in some areas. I think that you could see just the, the glimpses and glimmers of that previous FPX roster. Shao and Sagetsu didn't even have to put up previous top peak yeah. performances for them to get uh, their win in the first place. Yeah, I think that's the scariest thing to me, is that they really didn't need to to show their full force to kind of just dismiss crew yeah. even though they looked a bit dodgy the player quality and the level of experience and talent on the squad is just so high yeah but i don't know if it's all uh, all together there for navi i don't know if this is hubris from them with their map picks but one of the things that i was paying attention to was first of all the fact that they picked lotus in their matchup initially and this was signs of weakness for them i think that this Usually when teams are going to be picking Lotus in this tournament, our expectation was it's usually an underdog pick because there's so much uncertainty. Teams yeah. don't really know if they've got the right read on things. And we saw just levels to uh, levels to it where they didn't quite have a really fleshed out game plan where moments like that you're witnessing where they just can't really quite stop the, the post plant in time were just causing yeah. issues for them. Yeah, so th I, I, I felt like their attack side though was a lot better than their defense side. They really yeah. ended up dropping the ball in that first half, but they're still good enough to recover even when they do a, a well, little bit of trolling. Yeah, that's the thing, right? It's like they're, they're still good enough that even if they're doing a little bit of trolling, even if they're picking Lotus, they still manage to sail their way to a pretty comfortable win, I would say. So yeah, I mean, we can't be too harsh on them for that, but I do think it, it kind of like pried open and showed some weaknesses at least with this Navi squad. They're not just impossible to take down. One person I do want to see more of is CNED because we had a lot of questions about his flexibility, how he's going to 
to replace Ardis. What did you guys make of uh, his Jet and Raze as well? The two agents we did see him on. I mean, I, I think it looked acceptable, but he really wasn't pushed. I want to see more of the Raze. I want to see CNET playing Sage for them, other picks. I think CNET's one of those players where you know his Jet's awesome, but his Chamber struggled, and that made a lot of people concerned because if you can't play Chamber, yeah. can you play the other stuff that people are going to ask you to play on Na'Vi? I'm not too worried yet, though. I, I think he's got talent, but he's, you still need evidence of him succeeding in order to feel really comfortable. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, his jet was clearly a comfort for him as well. I mean, no no questions asked. I mean, I've got no difficulties just pointing out positive after positive with his jet gameplay, but it is that other flexibility on other agents that we're wondering about, I think, and we'll find out the deeper we get into the tournament. Yeah, I think he, uh, we'll probably find out today, hopefully. Uh, and speaking of uh, CNED, let's send this down to Barla at the Teletrader to break down a little bit of what we saw from Na'Vi. Guys, I really like the conversation we're having because I have a breakdown here uh, that'll show kind of how Angel and Navi are utilizing CNET to not really care so much about the flexibility. I want to look at the comp that they're running, Jet and Omen, and we'll start by taking a look at just what's happening on the pistol round. Uh, taking at the minimap, they're looking like they're going to go for a fast B hit. It's just basically uh, a smoke coming in from Angel, and then they're going to rotate around. CNET is going to pop his dash, and they're trying to faint like they're hitting this, but this is mostly just for them to get a pick, okay? But now they know he's popped his dash, now because you've actually seen him at this point, and they're going to rotate all the way back towards A. So you can see they're setting up for this, who gets is going to cover the flank, and what they do without the dash is what's really important here. CNET still has a smoke. He didn't use it to dash on the switch. And Angel's going to use that and draw the attention because there's a smoke going out there and it's kind of dissonant because you think CNET's used his dash already, but he has. And Angel's the guy who's going to get in the TP. So it's about how CNET attracts attention here. They're going to go on to take this pistol. But there's a couple more examples that I want to show as well. This one is kind of related to CNET, but also mostly Angel and Shao. They have the Nightfall uh, that's coming to come in from Shao, and that's going to cover the noise of where the ult's position is. And I think this one's just a little tip for you in ranked if you're trying to do this combination with uh, the Nightfall and the Omen TP, where you can see right now he's TPing on top of Jen. Sometimes you think, okay, let me uh, obscure the noise of my ult happening, but realistically here, you're trying to obscure the position of where he is. So Angel, I want you to watch exactly how he moves here on top of Jen. He's trying to get a kill. He's trying to surprise the guy who cannot see him because he's up close gen. Obviously, this is not happening. Melzer's just dodging the Nightfall, but they've got sight because of it. And again, there's an orbit around CNET that's grabbing attention. They're trying to look where he's dashing. They're trying to look where he's taking some space. And I think that's going to become a key factor here in this last round that I'll show you. They're grouping up again towards the B site. This time, they will hit. This time, CNET will dash. And I want you guys to think about what, th what that does for the opponent opposing team. There's two players in market here. Cena dashes into his smoke, and that's no up trap. So they don't think that there's any possibility of anybody being in a cage, and also using Omen's abilities to full capability, right? Getting up into this TP, starting to do some pressure. It doesn't look that great with the grouping of CNET and uh, Angel there. But what I really like on top of this is how Angel, and if this was CNET, he wouldn't have this capability unless he gets two kills. Angel has another way to get out of this. So Sugetsu just cages him again, and he's able to TP back towards stairs. This is the type of thing that I think is really cool that Angel is doing. He's utilizing CNET in a really interesting way, and it might not even necessarily have to do with the flexibility of CNET and just the big brainness of Angel. Sure, we might not see a scent today, but these are the types of things I'm looking at for Navi. Thank you very much, Bala, our resident telestrologist. <laughs> yeah. It's so hard to say. I, I think it's important <laughs> that Team Secret actually ban a scent today because you can't allow teams. When there are teams that understand that map that well, teams like Loud last year, teams like Leviathan and Lock uh, and Navi here at Lockin, when they they're just so difficult to shut down. It's that jet omen combo, and it just rinses people on attack. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, I'm glad Bala mentioned Angel as well. I feel like we have to talk about him, and we also have to talk about the other boomer. <laughs> on the side of Team Secret. They are the oldest <laughs> and the oh. second oldest uh, players of this entire tournament. <laughs> this graphic is incredible. Yeah, this is just amazing, but it is that battle of the two players who are IGLing for their team, the two oldest players, most experienced players as well. I think there was like an indirect quote as well of Jess, uh, Jesse Bash at the press conference saying that like, the match against Liquid was so easy, because of course it's easy. Playing against kids, like why wouldn't it be easy? <laughs> yeah, they're, all, they're all kids to him, I guess, you know, when he said that. Angel really stepped great. in though on behalf of EMEA asking Jesse Vash to pick on someone his own age. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a cane fight. Uh, they're both playing.
playing really well so far in the tournament, though. They're actually providing huge individual contributions as well as what they're doing in terms of experience, leadership, and IGL. Yeah, no, I completely agree. And I think that's going to be pretty key as well. And a big test as well for Jesse Vash, because, listen, you're up against Na'Vi. Angel's calling can sometimes be, it seems in a moment we saw from Balas Telestrator, a little bit erratic at times, some of the plays he pulls out. But they are really difficult to get a handle on, I think. Yeah. And, and so a big challenge for De uh, Jesse Vash in this upcoming series. Yeah, I mean, they've got some kids on their roster as well. And speaking of one of those kids, so get to here he is, uh, chatting a little bit about the team's performance after they beat Crew. Check it out. We are expecting a good performance from them. I think nothing. I was not thinking about uh, like our first map, what we will do, like our stuff. I have no like stressful situations anymore <laughs> when I'm going out and, uh, towards crowd. To be honest, our team wasn't following like uh, which score we were playing. Like when uh, we switching sides, we have like in our minds like is it zero zero and you're fighting for every round which you can. So we just. Uh, Focused and uh, won this round. It was serious. No cage or utility. And he's got more My space. My goodness, Angel. Oh! He's a man possessed. Oh, he's just looking to put him away and he's already gotten four. About uh, how they won Team Liquid. I think this team just not enough prepared for this kind of games. I don't know. So I can say that she should be afraid of us and uh, just prepare for us. For me, we're fully confident, so I think we will win the series also. I don't know, do something, but you cannot win us anymore. Thank you guys for watching us. Uh, keep supporting, we really appreciate it. And uh, follow us on VCT Brazil. I really like the point that he raised about preparation. He just felt like Liquid weren't prepared enough. But what we know of Angel, Doombrot, and Na'Vi is that if they have tapes, Bren, the game is different. They love preparing. They've had a little bit of time to prepare as well. So surely we see some counters if we're going to go uh, to the same maps as we saw last time with the, uh, with the Team Secret Liquid game. Yeah, it, it has given that you know valuable ammunition for them to be able to figure out what they were doing well. Like some of the things that I thought Secret were doing well, which you pointed out, Josh, was those util combos, right? Just to yeah. try and push people away, which is something that is going to be quite Quite readable. You can kind of exploit that as well, just by making sure that you tap the spike uh, and and fight with within the I suppose layers of util that's being sent your way, or maybe even just pulling out the util ahead of time. But for secret, what I would like to see for them is to actually just start throwing a bit more curveballs as well at them. Just something out of the ordinary that they weren't doing. They had a very, I would say, standard game plan when they played against Liquid. And I think if you have confidence, you're able to take the fights, you're in good form as well, and you throw a bit more of those curveballs, maybe just like flanking through mid if we end up do seeing Icebox or something. Yeah. Could, yeah, could I, be it. I, I think the keys to victory here for Team Secret are being able to uh, apply a lot of pressure onto Na'Vi and force them to react. I think they did a great job of that against Liquid. And then they need to hope that Angel is not having a very good game <laughs> because <laughs> Angel sometimes is... Uh, <laughs> A double-edged sword where he goes really aggressive and he either feasts or famines. And then I think the third thing is that they need to get, be getting really great performances out of Envy and Jeremy. Because th th if you set those guys up to challenge early on, Na'Vi are the kind of team that's going to wait for it. They're always really good at absorbing aggression. So they need big performances out of the people they set up early in the rounds. Well, it sounds like you guys uh, believe in Team Secret. I want to know what the guys at home think. Uh, we took a Twitter poll earlier and we asked you guys, which team today do you believe in the most? And it's actually Na'Vi. Yeah. And Vitality only got three points. Yeah. Brian, you need more you Twitter accounts. Off. Yeah, I need, <laughs> yeah. I need more you Twitter You need more accounts, bot apparently. accounts. But, offset that. but I, I think, though, that this... This match is Na'Vi as the heavy favorites because of so much that they've accomplished in the past. And it's not that Team Secret are getting underrated. A lot of people still believe in them, but they've got a mountain to climb in this match. Yeah, no, and also Josh as well. I can't believe you're saying that as well. Bias Caster, <laughs> this guy just <laughs> yeah. saying that, you know, listen, trying to offset the... Uh, Bias Caster, the, 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 the Copenhagen champions are clearly on the same level as Team Secret. Uh, yeah. the first He's time just I've upset that T Vitality didn't get, no. like, the amount of okay, support right, that he thought they were going to get. Secret so we've been singing the praises of Secret and all the strengths of them as well. This is a real possibility of them performing another massive upset, but it's going to be quite difficult, I think, still, because they're up against that heavy hitter team of Na'Vi. Well, to win this tournament, you need a perfect run. That applies to all of the teams today, but can one of them do it? Do they have what it takes to make it all the way? Let's find out, because lock-in day 10 starts right now.
Accurate have already taken down one EMEA team, but are they the real EU Slayers? Because I feel like Na'Vi will be a tougher opponent than the last one they had to face. And if by, by the chance that they can do it, I'm going to be starting singing the Cinderella run. I'm going to go for that. I'm going to do the talent thing of being like, Team Secret, this is their tournament. They can do it. Because I do feel like they're not heavily favoring in this matchup. No, I, I mean, if, if Secret win this game, that's bigger than anybody that talent managed to take down. I mean, they, this, is true. this would be an enormous scarf to take because this Na'Vi team has not really made that many changes. They've kept their core, their identity, their talent, and their synergy together from when they were up at the very top of the world, winning Copa and going deeper champs. And that's why everybody has been so high up on his Na'Vi squad heading into this. You know, many people had them as one of the favorites to make it into that top four uh, on their side of the bracket in particular as well. And this is, like we said prior, I mean, the biggest obstacle that Team Secret were facing quite some time, I imagine, from them. And it's those same keys to victory to just keep repeating in my head that you were talking about, Josh, and again, that we were all talking about, which is making sure that Jeremy uh, Envy end up having really good performances, again, playing a peak form, being able to force Na'Vi to make mistakes as well is going to be pretty important. I'm interested to see where this map select will go because I know you guys were a little bit critical about Na'Vi's Lotus, but they have traditionally had an incredibly deep map pool. They don't yeah. have a permaban. Yeah, I think Team Secret have to get rid of Ascent. And then for Na'Vi, it just comes down to, do you want to challenge Team Secret on the maps where you've already seen them? Do you want to rely on the tape? And it looks like it, right? They're not taking out any of the places where they beat Liquid. I think Na'Vi are going to be happy opting into that because they know what they're getting themselves into. Yeah, and so Icebox is the first map pick as well. I can understand this from Team Secret, but I think, again, it opens themselves up to a little bit of that counter-picking. Na'Vi are a team very prep-heavy. They love to know, you know, what they're going to be up against. And you are kind of, like, delivering yourself almost to the hands of Na'Vi with a pick like this. They did look strong at it. Maybe they can throw in a bit more to make themselves more of a threat on it. I'm also just looking towards CNED, and I, I'm anticipating his jet coming out on Icebox, maybe Pearl as well. Yeah. You know, getting him on maps where he can be super comfortable. You've got to imagine you have the advantage. And that is that is quite surprising. Team Secret taking Lotus out, where maybe they just don't want to mess with Na'Vi's attack side, because I, I really thought Angel was playing a great game on one half of the Lotus map. Yeah. But this decider is going to end up going down to Fracture. And I was impressed with what Team Secret were able to deliver there on their defense side. They had some good ideas. Borkum smoking himself off. Good synergy, good help between yep. the rest of the team. I think the way to describe Team Secret is they managed to put pressure on their opponents without making too many mistakes themselves. Um, you, you, you might be able to bait you know, somebody like Angel into making a bit of a sloppy move, maybe bait Cnet in there too. But the other three players on Na'Vi are so solid. Yeah. We're going into the Prime Gaming Agent Select here, and of course, we've seen Team Secret's comp already. I want to know what Na'Vi are going to do here. Are they actually just going to go for a counter pick? Uh, they're, they're re usually are the teams that aren't afraid to just switch up their comps whenever they can. Yeah, I mean, Josh, you were mentioning as well while we had a bit of time that, you know, Na'Vi are that kind of team where they will play multiple competitions. Oh! Out of tournament, but okay, we see Cena wow. gets to play the jet. I'm a big fan of that, obviously, whenever I can Angel see it, but Angel playing this Cypher. Cypher. And it is a pretty standard comp as far as Icebox compositions go, so maybe they just feel like they can play through it. Yeah, I mean, apart from the lack of no Sova, Sova, what yeah. are they going to do over at B main? How are they going to get through that congested area of the map? Yeah, that's going to be think, hard, actually. I think part of the read here might be that Team Secret love playing for retake, so they might have space without even having to use the drone. Well, the last time Angel played Cypher was a long, long time ago. And it's the one time that he's played it as well. So I can't wait to see what is going to happen in here. And it's time to pass us over to your casters for map one. It is Dog and Bola. Thank you, Sue. The crowd has shown up. They're already electric. We haven't even freaking started. We've opened up seating and it's it is it is getting more and more full it's with every full. moment that passes. It's getting well. full and people are getting crazy. And I couldn't be more excited for this match. I hope that these guys in the audience as well are super hyped because we just saw Team Secret take down an EMEA team. Maybe Navi is clearly way above liquid. I mean for sure. Maybe clearly. <laughs> but but there's that little inkling there. This is a potential for something here for Secret. Maybe there's something brewing. Maybe. This does really feel like a different beast, though. I mean, I think what you asked of them against Liquid and what you're asking of them now it just really feels like an entirely different conversation. But you're right. We play this game because there's always the possibility. Insta push down mid here for Navi. They're going to flash through the orb. Dubstep waiting to receive, and Xiao's able to clean him up right off the bat. Only one person there. They did not expect that whatsoever. He's trying to go on a lurk. And Zipon just flashes through. Secret's going to try to re-clear at this point. And look, CNET's actually, er, 
Angels actually just put his cam all the way down B long. They don't have to worry about this. They could cheat over towards Kitchen and A. Yeah, I mean, they have trips down there as well as a secondary line of defense. Looks like they might want to go for a boiler hit with this dart. Through mid, there's still a minute left. But they're trying to see, is there any stragglers right now? There's the dart going out. Flash as well to try to obscure that dart so he can tag somebody. Very clean. And while I don't think he got any tags, that's another instance of just how disciplined this Team Secret team is. Mm -hmm. See Ned with the Sheriff, one tappable. The knife's gonna spot him. I believe the drone did as well. See Ned now trying to duck for cover and stay alive. If ever, just a moment longer. Couple of shots landing, and yeah, that's gonna land for a kill. So Getsu's able to get one as well. Now Borkum applying pressure across the middle of the map. It's a 4v2 Ooh. here. They're gonna have a lot to do, and Borkum's have been able to do it at least for now. Jesse Bash still close by, trying to roll Ooh. back the years, and he does. It's a 1v1 though. They're not done yet. 21 HP. He spotted him. Able to land a few shots, and he spams through the box to get the pistol. Are you kidding me? A two versus five to start things? I mean, is this real? Borkum. Borkum. He might just be left. the GOAT. What is this? Against Navi, too. One enemy. Such a sick down. round from him. Remember, we started this round with Navi getting a pick. We started with them leaning towards the direction that that hit came in. Yeah. CNED gets a kill. Zippon gets another one on the site. That was a two versus five. And look at it, right back towards their old tricks, immediately trying to deny space with as much utility as they can. And remember how important that was against Liquid. They suffocated out when they were playing on this side. So yeah. you got to keep a close eye on that for one sure. Could be, one could make the argument that their shock volley combos, especially on the defense side, were what made Team Liquid break down. Yeah, yeah. I completely agree. I'm really curious now to see how they're going to continue to play the rotations with this Cypher. I mean, we haven't seen this since the days of Nats playing Cypher on this map. You had to hit your Nats quota, didn't you? Of course. <laughs> but it's relevant. I mean, it really is. He's probably going to play a lot of the trips, a lot of the cams. And don't forget, Cypher's gone it through a significant buff. The trips are much longer. So potentially we could see some really, really funky and gimmicky trips out of him. Very nice setup out here for Secret as they've gotten to the post plant. They've got the wall defending things, with Molly on the spike as well. But you really can't Molly and you really can't take care of that. CNED with a clean shot. Look at his movement too. Up to boiler, to top screens, but they have post plant and we've already seen how strong this is. He's gonna be able to stick it to at least half. half. Yeah, and then now able to back off as the kills go back and forth. Remember, this is that not a great go round out for Navi. That wall's blocking. Jeremy. 1v2, 72 HP, they've got to do it fast, they've got to do it fast, oh. he's got to get there quickly, oh. and he does! <laughs> a Red Bull clutch, a secret roar out of the gates in this best of three. Two clutches in a row. It's just incredible. We might be looking at a magical match. Does not be right off the gate, on the back foot, and in remaining. some very, very cool ways. And by cool, I mean clutch. No real time to think about it. We're jumping right into the next round. See Navi here with a gun advantage. And again, it's going to be a hit towards A. This the knife fast, tagged, though. Yeah, the knife tagged a couple of members, too. So Pump they should have top. a very good idea of where the hit's coming from. Zipan able to get two quick ones, but they're traded right back. CNB trying to tuck away, trying to get away, trying to stay alive. Not Surely not again. So. Surely not again. Man disadvantage. Dubstep with only a sheriff. He was their former star in Borkum. The man of the hour on the pistol. He's still alive. And he's got a phantom. Able to pick one up from the chaos and cacophony that ensued on the site. They still have plenty of time here too, Bala. This started with a rush, so yeah, they have half the round still to go. I'd be really interested if they rotate out, though. They have the Vipers wall up on A. And that's such an important tool. Dubstep upgraded a weapon, too. Yeah, got the Spectre now from one of his teammates. They're running it over towards B. There's a lot of tools here on both sides. Dubstep yeah. has one Molly. 
Shao has a wall, and Sugetsu has an orb, and two mollies. But with the way this rotation is, this is going to take a long time for them to get into this. Yeah, it is. And Borkum has the pit. Borkum has the pit. They didn't consider this. And Sugetsu fired off one of the mollies from Boiler to try to get a little bit of damage done. But how do you clear this now? A massive moment here. No, Chow still has his wall. Oh, the oh, foot. Oh. oh, the foot. Betrayed by a step. But he's still playing close by. He swings out. And he's punished. Integrity? Oh, my goodness. Just Hits barely. still up, though. Borkum playing in this 1v2. Again, clutches have Don't been the tail the for Team Secret. But you're right. The wall is still in play. And it goes up just on the other side of the wall. He's, he's going to have to spam through it. The panel's down. They he didn't out. even get a tap. Get he out. swings out. And Shao gets a kill, but yeah, I don't think he has enough time. There's no way, man. There's just no way. I thought for sure he was going to hold it, get it to half, and then take the fight. But another Red Bull clutch. I am speechless for these first three rounds. <laughs> just speechless. I, why did Shao, uh, Shao just didn't trust. Sugetsu was yeah. way too far to the right there. I would not have trusted either. But I mean, still, got a stick or you lose. It's Borkum again, too. Bit of early utility, utility used by Secret this time. Try to deny the orb. Recon as well, potentially a shock. Over towards Kitchen, not gonna just try to break anything because truly you don't really know how Angel's playing the Cypher yet. He's died before any of his utility has been a key factor in. Yeah. Right now there's one trip towards yellow so he can hold this left side angle. The knife looking to tag Angel and it did not. <sighs> but he's dead, so it doesn't matter. Wall up, spike down. Envy playing just on the other side. Cena so not able to find any value out of the sheriff. This is also really key here because these are the rounds when you have a gun advantage, I guess you should get through this cleanly. If Team Secret are winning the insane clutches and they can get through these rounds too, which statistically they're supposed to win, I mean, this could be smooth sailing. Yeah, the first anti-eagle was not clean though. It took heroics and Zipon's trying to make it the same exact thing. So got to two, ducks behind the wall. Sheriff in his hand, Jeremy has the res, but there's not a lot of time to use it. Sugetsu falls, but you're right, it wasn't clean. Yeah, but at this point, you're up 4-0. Your bank should be getting there. It's not, though. Navi finally going to get the op up for CNET as well. He tried to take an op angle in that first gun round, but instantly got traded off. This time he has the actual gun, and it's glass cannon, Doug. A gutsy, bold decision out from the EMEA representatives. We'll see if it pays off. Go up top. They're going his way. I like this setup. Zipon's holding the left. That's a really good off angle, really high up. Your crosshair placement's going to be busted. But there's going to be a drone out potentially, a dart, something like that. CNET's holding the other side, but they let him through. There's a drone that you mentioned. Does tag one. Doesn't spot CNET, though. And you might not expect it with the amount of money that he had to go for a glass cannon op. I mean, but surely you have CNET on jet. You consider it, right? I mean, the possibility at least. Either way, it doesn't look like fate will be tempted this time around, at least not yet. I just love how active Dubstep is with rearranging his alarm bot based off of the late round situation that they're going to set up for. There's going to be a flash. He's going to try to get through this, but there's a trip to deal with, too. It's the same setup that we saw early on in the pistol. Trying to get a dart tag, try to get a kill, and push the player off a of boiler entirely. The problem here is Angel knows they're not through because of the trip. Oh, he missed. My gosh, I thought that was it. I thought he was going to land it. The ult's been used. And now Team Secret start to swarm out onto the side. Zip Hand's still trying to hold the line, trying to keep them back. He's able to take care of one. Angel has arrived. And not a moment too soon, but Borkum finds two! If they get this res, we're back up to a four versus two. Shao cannot get his own res, but there's very limited time here if he kicks down the spike. Oh. Clean shot up from Shao's Jeremy Falls. Four seconds to 
Spike does go down. See Shao trying to clear a panel for Sugetsu to take the fight. Nothing there yet, but a clean flick out from him as he gets two of his own. 2v1 here, dubstep again. Heroics on the cards, and my gosh, he's halfway there. A 1v2 now. Shao on the tap, the op shot goes wide. He's trying to spam. Shao's pulled off, he's gotten it to one, and Shao stops it this time. Dude, they might just stop my heart at this point. What Dude. is going on? That was so freaking close. Every single round has been a nail biter. Every single round. And that's no exaggeration. I didn't know I could have this much fun watching Icebox. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. And we haven't even gotten a chance to see anything super nerdy yet either. I mean, Angel has died every round before his Cypher stuff goes off, before he gets a chance to even do anything. This time he, yeah. he got suppressed because he rotated really fast and they weren't even walking into it. And I think he was actually playing an anti-KO setup. Time out here called from Navi. It's a three round lead. This is an important time out. Yeah. I, I, I think this is huge. The amount of ults that are up for Team Secret and the desk was touching on this. Josh in particular saying there's no Sova in this comp for Na'Vi. And we've got a KJ locked down in the hands of Dubstep. How are you going to deal with that? The first thing that comes to mind, play really aggressive on A and, and try to get that space so you can flank B if they do go there. And you're also denying that pipes position for the lockdown. That's the first thing that comes to mind, but Angel thinks differently. So let's see what they have cooked up. This is a big round. Looks like we got another timeout as well. Just in case this hasn't been <laughs> exciting enough as it is, they're forcing you to wait through it. Let the anticipation build just a bit. And now we're back into the action. Seen it once again on this glass cannon off. That's crazy too, because they saved that up. And he still doesn't have the money to buy it because he dropped it for somebody else. Both Envy and Dubstep just going with pistols. No armor this time either. Yeah, another pause too. Yeah, I figured. <laughs> Something looked funny. Something yeah. looked funny in that buy, yeah. Mm -hmm. Tech pause coming through. We will let you all know what's going on and keep you all informed as soon as we are. But you're right, Ball. Again, this this round feels so important for this half. And I mean, you've got the potential for Secret really to, to double down on a bankroll. Yeah. Depending on how many of these ultimates they have to use, you'll have an uh, you'll have the ult economy your way. You'll have the financial economy going your way as well. Yep. This is big. Swing round. Swing round, and I think Secret have all the tools. And the mind game that's going to go on right now after this tech boss gets sorted and the teams can get back to talking to each other is how Na'Vi are going to approach countering your ults. Right. And the leveling that's going on between the IGLs, figuring out, okay, Angel, what's he gonna call? Are they gonna play aggressive? Can we counter that? It goes crazy out of timeouts. And you know, the truth is, we haven't really seen a ton of aggression defensively at the start of a round, right? No, no, yeah. So Other than pistol, yeah. Right, so this very well could be the time that you wanna dial up a little something spicy. Yeah, but I also think that that's kind of a common call. We, we're back in true, it. True, true. I, I do want to also note, Sugetsu's Viper's Pit can be countered by the lockdown. And not only that, but you have the Hunter's Fury synergy too. It's going to be looking like towards B. CNET is going to be key here. Yes, Artie he is. finds the pick, but I'm really concerned if he... Oh, oh, never mind. I'm not concerned anymore. Takes the head right off of Jesse Vash. Even with the knife in their face, they continue to push forward and they're punished. Rez on board. He has Hunter Fury too. My gosh. CNET seems to have awoken. Don't jump anymore, guys. Don't show your heads. <gasps> Go oh, that's a hand. <laughs> he hits a hand. Go for it. He may have six before him. One bullet left, though. And a player right beneath him. Jesse, who's already felt the wrath of CNET once, this time wins this duel. That's the one time I want somebody to end. <laughs> Just go for it. <laughs> Do it for the people, man. Still. This situation is not quite clear. Borkum won off his ult. They've given up B. Jesse Vash just got the kill over there. 
but Zippon's recovered this up. And the wall's still not used for Borkum, thankfully, because they're gonna need that to plant. Oh, they're gonna try to get the pit online. They hand the spike over to Borkum. As you mentioned, one point away from the pit. Bam. Wait until the wall goes up and then swing out. Well done. That might have tagged too. The pit may be in play oh, here. Oh, the spam! Oh, the spam! And a clean round out from Navi on the other side of the timeout. And yeah, it was primarily CNET who took care of business. Yeah, but even in the last seconds there, Shao, just hearing the audio cue of where that plant is going, and because your Sage is down already, you have no protection. This is just a beautiful round from CNET. A ridiculous shot using the elevation of the little snow bank in the, the bottom right of yeah. that screen there to get the headshot angle is so clean. Such good movement. And I think they've gotten themselves back into a, a healthy spot here, Navi, regardless of how the first six rounds went. I mean, we talked so much about the importance of that round, the swing round, as you as you dubbed it. And yeah, because of that, they are in a much more comfortable position than they were before. Oh, there you go. Starting to find the shocks uh -huh. to kill the trips down. And that one is actually placed post barrier. So you could spot it going down. But the cool thing is you can't break it without peeking deep. So you have to use a shock there. Right. Look at the orb as well, placed for Sugetsu. Oh. Or no, the cage from Angel. Oh. Very aware. Camera, Hunter Fury used. Out from Jesse, and yeah, he takes care of Sugetsu. Shao's got a line. Oh. Dude, these, these are specters. They've invested the Hunter Fury, they invested the Viper Pit, now they have control. This is so good from Team Secret. Look at this ult. We've seen this a number of times. Yeah. This is a very gimmicky thing, but right now they just made it look super optimal. They can't get into kitchen, and this is going to be not only spammable from so many different places, right. but how do you clear? You see Jesse going for the flank, trying to establish mid control. They're repositioning right now to rotate through kitchen, but that's walled off, so they're going to have to call a save. Maybe even preemptively now without even seeing this wall. Yeah. Yeah, they're going. Yeah, there's just not enough time. I'm looking at Jesse Vash right now. He is deep in the mid, lurking towards A. And that knife finding Angel's the cue for him to speed up a little bit. Seen it hidden here though. He may be able to preserve the up unless he can do something about it. Nope, shoulder taken off instead. Thrifty round win for Secret. We were just talking about how it seemed like Navi were able to equalize things out of the timeout and put themselves in a better position. The thrifty round win from Secret spits in the face of all of that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, two massive picks on B. Uh, obviously, there was the drone tag, and Sugetsu gets hit by it. You can't do anything with that unless you have god tier dodging skills. Or you're playing Jet. Especially with Jesse Vash, this guy has been a beast on Sova. Just an absolute beast. He's been using his ult consistently early. And the funny part is, that usually could get them in trouble against a Killjoy, but they don't got that. Again, you see the persistence, the insistence on denial of utility from Secret. Denial of having orbs. Zippon gets tagged there, breaks the drone, and CNET actually takes the angle back. That Zippon was on. They've just gotten a lot of information right now because of how quiet it is over towards A. But Team Secret, they're doing it on purpose. Look, they've doubled up the trips right now, both in Kitchen and in two. Angel's very aware of how easily they just won that last round. Yeah. And the nice thing is, if there's any doubt of them potentially going B, you've got Angel who's got the cam set up long, so you can just toggle in and out of that to confirm. And because of that, they still have three members here. See, Ned with the op, he finds another. Zipan trying to clear out the wall that was up, and Cena gets a second. You might as well leave it on, leave the cam on Cena for now. <laughs> and he's, oh my gosh, he does it. Still up, still in play, and still fragging. Four on the round. This guy is such a beast. And what a treat to have him back on an international stage. The champion in 2021. And with this team around him, he looks in prime form. That shot, I mean, there's been 
so many shots are just like jaw dropping. Yeah. I mean, he can make a frag movie out of the first nine rounds. <laughs> and Team Secret is still up. Still up by two. Cross map orb one way for Zippon right yeah, there. You just saw it cool. in the smaller camera. And that potentially allows Zippon to have a more comfortable time holding B by himself. So Getz is going to have to ult here. He knows it's coming in, but remember what I said. The lockdown can counter this, but they're also just giving up the side. He's just planning up top. That's Xiao oh. with the spam. Xiao with okay. the spam and Zenit with the up. We mentioned it a few rounds ago. CNET seems to have come alive, and so have Na'Vi. The prime gaming flawless to drop the gap down to one round. How many kills does CNET have? 12. It feels like way more. Yeah, I, th I thought for sure he was flirting with 20. But look, this is starting to be the nerdy stuff. Shao there with the angle, finding the gap in the wall. I'm not sure how early they broke that or what. Or maybe there's a mist. Oh, I think the panel was spammed out right off the bat. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Or. Something went wrong, I'm not sure. Either way, you also have Sugetsu with so many. I mean, we already saw it on the B site, that one time where you had the audio cue and the spam through the smoke. But there's so many times where you just have people pinging on Na'Vi where the potential spots they could be hiding in the pit or lurking up. And that's how you get another kill. Jesse Vash just gets dropped there. Into the 10th round, though. It is an eco. Dubstep has really not found a way to use this lockdown, and I mean, that's definitely a big problem for them. Yep. They don't have a counter to it. That gains you so much space. It's been like six rounds where he's had it up. You wonder here if they choose to invest it. Here we go. They're gonna get it down this time, potentially. I mean, it's an eco round, so you don't even want to invest it, but you yeah. have the space to use it. It's such a conundrum. Uh, but the problem is now this is taking so long that the space that they had is very well gone. And I like that Navi's just playing up there. And they're like, yeah, you can use it if you want. That's fine. We'll be happy with that. This is your eco. We're still going to potentially have a chance to retake this easily. I can't imagine they invest. This is taking too long. See Ned missing. He's been so good. You have to call it out. Shouts you get to do not, though. One enemy remaining. Now dubstep drops. Another prime gaming flawless comes through for Navi. Look. The score is tied, yes. And Team Secret, I think, played great so far in this game. But Na'Vi, when they win these rounds, they just look like perfection. Yeah, yep. Enemy remaining. And, and remember what we were talking about a lot when we first, and if you watched that first game for Na'Vi against Crew, it was a lot of Zippon, it was a lot of Angel. The other stars, they weren't necessarily the biggest factors in that game. Yep. They were, in some senses, struggling. Here, not at all. No, they're all mine. It's and, their playground. And to go back to what you were mentioning, Na'Vi, when they win their rounds, they look clean. When Secret was winning their rounds, it was clutches. It was magic, right? How much of that magic dust do you have left? Here we go. They've given the space this time. You do have an anti-KO setup being played by Angel. He's way off the site with two trips for Sugetsu to play with. And they're mauling him off the pipes. This is taking forever still. Look at the flank. It's coming in. This is what I was talking about. There's multiple counters here. The turret destroyed. And Zipan's actually rotating back. The alarm bot spotting one as well. And the thing is, you don't know if it's coming from mid. You don't know if it's coming from spawn. Jeremy gets the spike down. Lockdown finally being invested. That's good timing there, actually. They've given up the flank after breaking the alarm bot. No way. Oh, he had two lined up. But Envy able to decapitate him for now. 4v4 here on the round. They have to wait for the lockdown to clear. This post plan is the retake is taking way too long because of that lockdown. Dubstep very far away. He has two mollies to work with, but he's so worried about the flank that he's not able to help with the fight on site. 3v3 here. Zip yep. and falls. The other molly missed, by the way. It's in front of that. I think it hit the wall again. Oh, oh. that's going to hurt. He's not able to even get half as Borkum goes aggressive and he's punished. There's no time. No, there's not. A round secured by Secret to give them the lead yet again. All guns gone, though. And there's a bank for Na'Vi, so this last round is scrappy for Team Secret to get some sort of economy going. Yeah, absolutely. Even after the win. And you can see the power of that. I, I, I think Team Secret was a little too... I, I mean, sure, the lockdown won them the round. Don't get me wrong. Right but a little too hesitant to try to use it to 
secure the round like they did there rather than use it to get them in positions to win the round. Because right. when they get in those clutch situations in the post plants, I think they've been doing quite well. Especially with the amount of post plant utility you have. I think that's the win condition and I, I think it's been slightly errant. They're still in the lead though. Which given given Cena's performance, given Chow's performance is really impressive. Note Angel there waited for the shock dart to be used before he put, uh, and then he put the trip down. Yeah. Little things like that, man. That's how you know uh -huh. these guys are optimizing. And again, he's so ready for that sort of play from Borkum. And since those couple of clutches for Borkum, it's been really rough for him to get anything going. Oh, now the neural theft. Gonna expose so much. CNET going aggressive, CNET taking the angle, and CNET taking lives too. Now 4v2 economy, horrible, so get Zeus clean as he gets three. And we're tied at six apiece. Surely we're gonna look at that one one more time. <laughs> it's, it's so clean when they win the round. It is absolutely just, look at this from Angel. He's just waiting for the spam to happen. Waiting for him to maybe try to break the trip, something like that. Sugetsu with his one way too. You can't let this guy have this. I mean, it's so disgusting. Somehow, through all of what we've seen, Team Secret are still in this. We're tied at six apiece. They have a shot at it. Let's throw it down to the desk. Cien Su, take it away. Thank you very much, Dog and Bala. You guys said the Team Secret, we didn't see enough of them. They weren't pushed hard enough. Uh, I feel like they have been now. Yeah, they've definitely been pushed to their limit, I think, but Team Secret have been so impressive with what they've brought to the table as well. Uh, Doug was talking about round one, round three, the, the magical stuff that happened early on. So I wanted to showcase it again because Doug was saying that it was magic dust, but I think it, it was all Borkum. It was Borkum out here just ripping through the team, just finding all of these magical moments to clutch. The way he opens himself up to only one angle so that he's able to isolate 1v1s is amazing here. And I told you, these Team Secret players have actually got the talent to be able to bring it to Na'Vi. Uh, the fact that they're able to win a 2v5 in round one and then a 2v3 here, where it's Borkum again? It's absurd, but the question is, have they done enough in the first half? And I would say, Na'Vi's comp should have done better on the defense side. Yeah. So I actually think Team Secret might have done enough here. No, I completely agree with that as well, because you look at this composition, and we you know, brought up that head-to-head -head battle between Jesse Vash and Angel, but it really does manifest, I think, in terms of the way Angel has directed what composition they wanted to play on this one as well, because you know Angel is going to be playing this Cypher into it, and now the questions are coming out. How are they going to be attacking on Icebox now when they don't have a Sova, and they have this Cypher? You know, there's, there's all these little things that are piling up, like on the fact that Jesse Vash as well doesn't have to worry about using his ult for a lockdown, because they don't have that yeah. to go up against. All these little advantages that should be playing on the side of Team Secret to be able to take it away. Yeah, I think Secret can play hard at the first chokes. Don't play retake or plant denial. Fight, fight, fight aggressively. A main, B main. And you can get free lockdowns. It should be doable. I want to see some more magic dust in the second half. Uh, back to you, Doug and Bala. Thank you, Insu. Yeah, I mean, there are a couple of things that the desk touched on there that I want to go back to. One of them being the, the conversation around the lockdown, Yeah. right? They had it early in the first half. Don't use it until, what, round 10? Something along those lines. So you're sitting on that for so round long, 11. you aren't able to really get max value out of it. Yep. It would just be interesting to see. I mean, they I were very hesitant on attack, maybe differently on I, defense, I think so. it'll be much easier uh, on this side. Yeah. Uh, and I also think Dubstep, who, may I remind you, the times we've seen Team Secret, he was the fragger, he was the star on this team. He was that Jet player. Right now struggling, but I think a lot of that comes down to him having so much responsibility. There's an early pick. Same thing that Navi pulled out on the pistol, just slightly different. And we haven't really seen much of these man advantage situations for Team Secret. You're right, we haven't. What we have seen a lot of that we just saw again is Angel being the first touch. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the guy's consistent. He likes to fight. And well, if you win him more often than not, why not, I guess? But you just tow a very fine line when you play at that pace. The spike made its way, has made its way up towards 410. You see CNED waiting for the flank that has never come. 
but it looks like they're going to be able to contact out, and there's no one really looking. Yeah, that wall's going to go up, but they haven't cleared Borkum, have they? Oh, they've not. There's a counter wall up to Xiao gets the spike down. There's no wall to defend it here because they invested it to control the site itself. Can't give up bodies anymore. No. To these early picks before they force Navi off the site. Dubstep, Dubstep can't work away in, and Envy can't either. They find it clear out the panel. A little high low is way too much for CNET to handle. It's way too much for Navi to handle. They're overwhelmed, and they're done. That's a good pistol. Carrying all the advantage you can possibly get from that initial pick. And you mentioned Angel with the first kill. Going down to Envy right here. Not the most impactful agent, but you could think maybe you start to have Angel wrapping in the mid round. And then Borkum, yes, he did fall after getting the first kill, but he maintained the advantage at least. He got his. And then they properly cleared the rest of the site together. But that high-low swing, really, really nice. Big anti-eco here, Team Secret. It hasn't been clean on the anti-eco so far, and that has caused problems and given Navi a lot of staying power in this game. It was 4-1 at some point, and when Navi won that second round, they got broken economically. Yep. Drone being used by Jesse to try to spot some info mid. But again, Angel, the tip of the spear, the first one to swing out. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm super curious because Shao has the spike in mid. I think there was a second there that Angel wanted to call an audible, but decided against it. So they will fake over towards here with the cages. Angel gets knifed. CNET's still here. That looked like it cleared. It was a really nice setup, right? They want to creep out up to be just long enough to trigger the Killjoy utility and then rotate off. I'm wondering if this wall was just placed, actually, given the way that Jeremy is rotating off. Yeah. Does Shao have a counter wall to get over? No, they're going to have to wait this out if they want the ruse to still be there. 30 seconds left. It is solid. Yeah, and there's just, there's not a lot of time left here. They kind of have to commit to it, and that's going to give away what's going on. The decay, Zippa's all by himself now. Oh! oh! Trade it out. Shot, though. Did they get the space? Yes. 14 They're, seconds for the plant. This is where that shot comes in from Jesse Vash. He doesn't have it. CNN's going to show up on site. He's got a marshal, but Angel gets two. It's all on to CNN, and he's gotten one with the marshal. A 1v1 left. And be on the tap. Tempting CNN to go aggressive, and he does. Not able to land the shots. The young buck from Team Secret wins it out. Another 1v1. This game might have the most clutch attempts of any game, aside from maybe the NRG Loud series that went just three map kick a banger. This again wasn't clean. I mentioned at the beginning of the round, how did Angel get two there? I thought CNET had a chance, but Envy waited long enough there to give CNET the doubt yeah. that he was sticking in it. And CNET dashes forward. I mean, that was still such a good play, too. Forces him to get off if he was sticking. And also gives him a new angle. Jeremy with the early slow for dubstep to take the fight. Oh, oh he oh, spotted wow. ahead. Wait, hello? Patience? Discipline? Or a mistake? They saw him on the minimap, Doug. That's why Suketsu starts spamming. CNET just barely on his screen saw him on the minimap. Got a little greedy. He could have gotten a free kill on yep. CNET of all people. Yeah. A kill in the hand is worth two in the bush? Maybe. Something like that. <laughs> all right. Wow. Jesse showing you can use the marshal just as well. That is such a deep angle behind the orb, too. You never expect that. It's funny, because Sugetsu could have easily been watching that. I wouldn't be surprised. Angel CNED leaning towards mid, maybe waiting for a dart of some sort. There it goes over towards B. That's going to be their Q. I think the players are going to make noise on A first. There's the knife. Now time for CNET and Angel to strike. This is the key for them. They've got Jesse here. 
There's CNED with the first kill, you're right. Morricum falls, but Jesse gets another. That slow is too perfect yeah, for is. anybody playing in the backside. Yep. And Angel with the cage too, that enables them. That extra smoke enables them to get in the site and get out. I like this too. This is not expected for everybody to play so deep in the back of site. Oh. oh. A brutal headache, all that's delivered as Angel gets two to clean up the round. And they take back the anti-bonus. That is a crucial round to stay in this game. Always in these second halves, no matter what the scoreline is. Team Secret is starting to get rolling with their shock molly combos. We haven't seen it because Navi is really just not really playing into it. Except for the exception of CNET in that last round. He updrafted early. Yeah. And that has been somewhere where you could send that shock molly. It's not going to happen this round, though. Ooh, really deep trip. I <laughs> With the B presence, maybe they're pushing them back so far that they're easily going to rotate after they get the orb. And I think they already did manage that. Interesting here how Secret really don't rotate off of A, given that they saw the knife get three early on. And now they have the, the recon cleared out as well, so they know there's still some presence long. Orb comes up, Jesse Vash's drone goes out. Everybody's dodging it. And I mean, I can't believe CNET's walked all the way up here with the wall. They have so much space on both sides of the map. They already know Borkham's position, by the way. They cammed it earlier. Borkham had to break it. Well, the problem with an approach like this, though, is if you lose members on both sides, as you take these split fights, oh, what a peek out from Angel. Ah, utility in hand. Timing unfortunate. Actually, Angel's Cypher ult went off there. And I think that caused that second kill to be kind of easy. They get the res back up, too. I like this approach. Oh, Angel's been tagged. Angel falls. Hey, I'll take that trade, though. Trade the res for the Hunter's Fury? Yes, any day. Kills Angel's stats, though. Unlucky. Shao jumping away. Jesse Bash falls. 3v2 here in favor of Navi. They have full sight control as well. It's going to be really difficult for Secret to find a way in. Dubstep with a whole lot to do, and he's gotten into a 1v1, my gosh. <laughs> I'm losing my mind. That was too close, man. <laughs> oh, that was too close. It's just happening over and over and over, but I think the magic dust is running out. There's a hole in the pocket at this point because Navi is stealing it away. I think Team Secret right now, it's tied up still. Right. Team Secret had, and they still have, a good chance at this map. Yeah, they do. But Navi is firing on all cylinders, and they've broken the money. So this should be a lead here for Navi. And a third close by. But it seems like all of Navi are grouping towards V-Long. Meanwhile, Sugetsu's still back A. And it seems like Secret want to fight this. The flash in the face, the CNET has to drop. I can't believe Angel has a cage up there to save them. I've never seen this wall be used. Nope, me neither. It kind of gives you a weird angle on the backside. If you can maybe cross there, I wonder if Angel's actually aware. Either way, they're just rotating off. They don't want to deal with it. There's been three pieces of utility shown on that site. They already got the mollies off from dubstep two. All up to Borkham right now. See Ned, the cloud burst to drop, the dart, the swing out, the shot doesn't land, but he stays alive. The spike still hasn't gotten down yet. See Ned's one pushing forward, Jesse just waiting. Just waiting and waiting. Now they see the wall up, they see the spike going down, and they have to go aggressive. They have to try to take these fights. Viper's pit invested, and round certainly secured at this point. Unless they can do something about it here, they have numbers. Speak too They've soon, there's no mollies well. anymore. Everything's Angel's suppressed. the flank, he's upgraded a weapon, and he's up top. Angel needs to be the one to clear him out here. They know where he is, and yeah, he's dropped. It's the one weapon they had, now gone. And nobody coming from the rope either. You can't res him from down there. What was that? Not the pit, though. The tap, just to threaten. Angel gets four on the round, and the, the round is secured for Navi. They lined up. 
But okay, hey, there's the first non-clean round, I think, when it comes to those anti-ecos from Navi. And when they're still looking quite good, they got the pit down, and then all of a sudden things started going haywire. Those shots from Jeremy, for example, and Envy catching Cena just willy-nilly jumping around there. I wonder if he thought he was way safe or if there's somebody watching that walk out of rafter. But either way, yeah. Angel with the lineup at the end. He's gotten two of those in two rounds. Don't forget what happened on Lotus. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Tech Paul is coming through. As always, once we're informed, we will inform you as well. Paul, I, I need to go back to, you know, as much as we, we talk about Angel and his calling, it really is so much fun to watch them on the attacking side. They manipulate the map so well. They play their opponents like freaking puppets, bro. The rotations, they draw utility, they draw rotations, they establish full control of the map yeah. and just leave Secret two, perhaps even three steps behind at times. Yeah. I, I mean, I think back to the to that res round where you rotated, you had so much control in A, you finally start pushing on B, and then the rotate comes back over towards A. And they get the res off because they're playing so aggressively on both sides of the map. I think a lot of that comes down to just having really good ideas about how to play the game in general. Sure. Not even thinking about your opponents. A lot of times, especially, like for example, what we saw in the crew game from Navi, was just cycling through the strap book, for example. I think we're seeing a little bit much of the same. What I really find super impressive is how every single player is optimizing some little detail that there's just no way it's coming from just Angel or just Doom Bros. Right. It's them putting in yep. so much individual work to improve and optimize the setups that are given to them. You know, the fun thing about a global stage such as this is that it is the nuance that separates the good from the great. Yeah. Right? Like, that often is the difference maker when you've got really two really good teams going up against one another. And you can see that in this game. A thousand percent. I mean, Team Secret is 100 percent playing with nuance, in, yep. especially on this defensive side. We still need Thunder Six, man. <laughs> yeah, we got to get some. I am being told that there's a headset issue uh, going on, so as soon as we get that figured out, we'll get back into things. These pauses here are so brutal because, again, the teams, they cannot talk in these tech pauses. Yeah. It's late in a map, right? You, you're thinking through everything that's going on. You're reflecting on the previous rounds, the 17 rounds that you've played through, yep. and you, you, all you can do is dwell in it. Right? Because you can't talk about it to people, you can't process through it out loud. It's yep. all just internal. You're just left with your own thoughts. Yeah, I think it's particularly tough for Secret in this instance. Given the fact that right now it might feel that the lead slept or slipped from their hands. Yeah. It's only one round difference, so I'm wondering who's on the team right now. Keeping them grounded, keeping them in the moment, keeping them knowing that this is still very much in their hands. They just gotta. Kneel down and pick it up. Yep. And this is where there's value in boomers too, man. The experience, <laughs> the stuff you've gone through throughout your career. What I mean, we got two 32-year-olds in the server yeah. right now, Angel and Jesse Vash. CNET pushing the pace. We haven't seen this from them. Oh my. Oh, the dart. That's I believe Tech too as well. Yeah. They're just rushing up mid right now. They got an interesting wall. This is really tough to play in the post point. There's not really great positions to play for it. You have to hold on to mid. And that's there you what, go. Yeah, that's what they're going to try to do. They want to fight for it as well. Doesn't even peek off of the flash. Oh, because the orb went up. It just bork him here. And the aim punch just too strong. I like the idea there for Sugetsu to reposition with his orb, but that does force Zippon to have to do a lot of the heavy lifting if he goes down. And now, I mean, really through all that, it's Jesse who's left with the heavy lifting. And economy's not in a great situation here, so victory looks like just preserving your weapon. Dart, oh, he gets away. Remember here, that's that's really what's left is, can they preserve this rifle? And they're hunting for Ooh, him. Wow, they're he, looking wait, for him. He could have gotten away. Oh, he may have gotten away. <laughs> oh, shot. In the face of three, he keeps the weapon, the prize possession to carry into the next. I mean, it's treasure for him at this point. It's going to be the only Vandal here. 
and they are fishing for anything they could get. Stingers a couple bought up. I thought for sure he had the information that they weren't all three, I mean that they were all three chasing him, but that's the reason why he backs up and stays close in maze there. It's because there could have been somebody going up towards belt or something right. like that as well. And there was. Pit used early by Borkum towards A. You had the knife tag a couple of members from Navi on B long. So a decent idea of what the setup looks like so far. Arm in the orb for Shao. He's going to have his res up if he gets the plant. He has the spike up for now. And they have confirmed this pit over towards the A side. It's so aware. Just breaking every piece of utility. That's in their path. Dash activated. That means a flash is coming soon here for Zipon. No flash, just dash. The knife cleared it, so. Yeah. Doesn't even need to invest it. Between that and the Viper wall, ensuring there's no one who's able to spam through that. Try to spot him dashing through. Oh gosh. Oh gosh. Oh gosh. Oh, he gets two. And now he's been able to upgrade a weapon. And those guys are not resible. So no matter what, Shao probably is not going to have impact with that no. in this round. No. Three rifles in the hand of Secret here. They've got ult as well. KJ ult. Four oh magic no! required. Oh no! But see now. Not like this. He's so patient. Oh, he's going to get two. And the lockdown. CNET saves the day for Navi. But it's still a 2v2, and they still have a rifle to work with. Jesse's gotten into a 2v1. What can Xiao do? He's got the res. Oh, no the armor. Fake. There's no way that they, they don't clear. secure this round. They're going to swing him. They know where he is now. No damage dealt. The spam through. Borkum getting it to half. Sticking, He's sticking. He's going to stick it all the way through, but Xiao spam is too good. The Red Bull clutch in favor of Navi. What a freaking map. And what a bloody tragedy that would have been had they not secured it, given CNN's heroics, for it to still be a 1v1 at the end. I mean, Doug, I'm still crying from what just happened. They just don't check. Dubstep too focused on getting it down. It's been a win condition that the coach is probably harping on. Oh. And because of that focus, because of that instance, he loses. The prize. Navi up big now, three rounds. And the final time, oh, actually the first time out coming out here from Team Secret, that's surprising. But they have been in the driving seat. I mean, until the last couple. Yeah. Man, and just when it seemed like it was gonna be magic, <laughs> that kept Secret in this. It was, it, again, a heroic play out from CNED. Not just to get two kills, right? Because those two kills by themselves are great, but the fact that it happened to be where the lockdown was going yeah. just destroys everything. And can I just say, Xiao, again, this, this guy cannot be stopped in the clutch. Nope. Xiao is good. You start to worry about the economy here for Secret. They've got to win this round. Otherwise, you have Navi on map point and not a lot of money to work with. Seems like Navi may want to go fast here, too. They've given up on the shock molly. They're not finding value here. Four come against CNET. There you go. Talk about first kills in this series. It has been heavily in favor of Navi. The ult immediately for Jesse Vash, too. They pinged it before it even comes out, but CNET gets the dash. So frustrating. You seem like you think you've got you think you've got seen it. You kill him once. You know he's getting res. Surely the Hunter's Fury will secure it, but no. The mobility just too much. Now Navi slowing things down. Reducing the pace in the face of the defenses that Secret have set up. With 55 seconds left. We've seen multiple times these rounds come down to a race to plant the spike. And there is actually a lot of control of space for Team Secret. They're not in front of pipes. Those double cages go out. The executes coming. Angels first again. Navi managing to erase the lead that Secret had, and they're now looking to put him away. The Molly, oh. the shot dart, and the kill on Angel. 
How much more can they find? 20 seconds. The spike is, I mean, it's just on the precipice of being able to be planted. Seen it has to find some space. No more smoke for him either, but it's the transfer. Clean they get in. shots. Clean shots. Again, this round very well could decide the map because they're not going to have a ton of money left, and there's no success coming through for Secret. Navi, map point. I can't imagine what is going through Team Secret's head right now because I would be absolutely broken. If Jesse Vash is a second earlier, he gets this kill on CNET, honestly. Yeah. And they still have success going into the site. This was still a 5v5 when they take down Angel. But the trades are just so solid. No, the second timeout for Team Secret has not been used. So they're going at it without speaking to their coach. Either reckless or confidence. But either way, they feel good about the plan they have before them. I mentioned the first kills and how important they've been. Navi, in this map, have gotten 14. Good night. It's so difficult to find round wins when you're constantly at a deficit like that. And can you imagine how this is even? There it is. Angel onto Borkham. That's a huge pick. That's the Viper wall here. That delays for so long on A. You could see even in the last round how it was so difficult, especially after that early utility didn't work out to get them the space. Holt used. Jeremy playing close by, trying to find something cheeky, but not able to do so. This is it. Yeah. Patience coming in. They're waiting for potential shocks from Jesse Vash. Exactly. Interesting here that they're choosing to rotate off today. They're they have the to They just use it to pivot if they need. This gives them all the information that Little risk to take. And they're taking so much space off of the information that they've just garnered. Look at how far up CNET is at this point. I feel like Dubstep's aware there. He looks like he's looking at Kitchen. He's backing off towards Snowman so he doesn't get pinched in. Good molly. Oh, Very good 13 molly. seconds. He has to go around. He has to plan in front. CNET's got to find a kill here. He's got to find a kill here, and he does. This should secure the plant. It should secure the site. And it very well may secure the map. Only two left on the side of Secret. A Bulldog and a Guardian. The Bulldog gets two, but there's still so much for Envy to do. He's healthy, he's got utility, but he doesn't have his time. What he doesn't have is help, and what he does not have, at least for now compared to his opponents, is health. And it falls in the face of magic from Secret. Navi take map one. What an absolute banger. I know the score says 13-8, but there was so much in that game for both parties. We started with three clutches back to back to back. Yeah. yeah. And we did not end with that. That feels like an eternity ago as well, man. I just can't wait for the rest of this series. This was so much fun to watch. Another instance in which it's not about how you start, man. Right, like how much, how well Secret played at the beginning and how Navi were able to right the ship. Oh, Just made for a blast, yeah. We'll see if Pearl's the same way. We're gonna throw it to a break. Stick with us, friends. We'll be back shortly.
Red Bull gives you wings.